Niran watched in disbelief as the human crew of the Defiant belted out a chilling battle hymn, their voices ringing through the smoke-filled corridors of their crippled ship. Somehow, impossibly, they were singing. Moments before, the Defiant and Niran's Prylorian warship had been locked in a vicious duel, trading salvos of missiles and searing energy beams. The human ship was outgunned and outmatched. Its shields were failing, hull breaches venting atmosphere into the void. Captain John Williams knew they couldn't win a slugging match. He had been about to order a suicidal ramming maneuver, a last-ditch effort to buy time for his crew to escape in life pods. But now the humans were singing as they fought, their voices defiant and strong. It made no sense. What could singing possibly accomplish against the might of a Prylorian warship? Niran leaned forward in his command chair, mandibles quivering with rage and confusion. The battle hymn swelled in volume, blasting from every speaker on the human ship. The sound was picked up by the Defiant's comms and transmitted to Niran's bridge. Impossibly, the human crew sang louder, Voices joined in perfect harmony, even as they rushed to patch hull breaches and target the Prylorian ship with weapons. Niran slammed a clawed fist on his armrest. The humans should be panicking, begging for mercy, yet still they fought. Still they sang, as if the song itself fueled their resistance. He needed to silence that song, to destroy the Defiant now, before the humans' madness infected his own crew. Niran leaned forward his eyes fixed on the human ship, his mind racing. What power did this human battle song hold, and what price would he pay if he failed to snuff it out? The fate of the battle, and perhaps the war, hung on the answer. The bridge of Niran's warship erupted into a frenzy of activity, as the strange, melodic sounds from the human ship filled the air. Niran gripped the armrests of his command chair, his claws digging into the metal, he had battled countless species across the galaxy, but never had he faced an enemy that sang in the face of destruction. What is that noise? Niran demanded, his mandibles twitching with agitation. Are they trying to communicate? Zax or Niran's second in command shook his head. It must be some kind of distress signal, Captain. Their ship is failing. We should press the attack and finish them off. Niran hesitated his instincts warning him that something was off. He leaned forward, studying the main view screen intently. The display showed a visual of the human bridge, where Captain Williams and his crew were singing with fierce determination etched on their faces. There was no hint of fear or desperation in their eyes, only a resolute defiance that unsettled Niran. They don't look like a crew on the verge of defeat, Niran muttered more to himself than to Zaxa. Suddenly, the Defiant's weapons fire intensified, scoring direct hits on the Prylorian ship's engines despite its weakened shields. The deck shuddered beneath Niran's feet as the impacts resonated through the hull. Evasive maneuvers, Niran barked, but his ship responded sluggishly, hampered by the damage it had sustained. On the viewscreen, the human singing swelled to a crescendo, their voices ringing out in perfect unison. To the Prylorian's shock, the Defiant surged forward, its engines flaring with a brilliant burst of power that should have been impossible for a ship in its condition. The human vessel executed a tight turn, maneuvering with a grace and precision that belied its battered state. It circled behind the Prylorian warship, and before Niran could react, the Defiant unleashed a barrage of weapons fire at point-blank range into the vulnerable rear of his ship. Explosions blossomed across the Prylorian ship's hull as the Defiant's weapons found their mark. Alarms blared and sparks flew from damaged consoles as Niran's crew scrambled to contain the destruction. Divert all power to aft shields, Niran commanded, his voice rising above the chaos. Return fire. But even as his crew rushed to obey, Niran couldn't shake the feeling that he was witnessing something unprecedented. The human's battle song continued to echo through the comms, a haunting and powerful sound that seemed to fuel their impossible feats. Niran's ship shuddered again as another salvo from the Defiant slammed into its hull. The Prylorian captain gritted his teeth, realizing that he had gravely underestimated the humans and their strange, melodic battle cry. 
Niran's ship shook as the Defiant's weapons pummeled its weakened shields. Sparks erupted from overloaded consoles, filling the bridge with acrid smoke. The Prylorian captain slammed a clawed fist on his armrest, mandibles flaring in frustration. Disengage! Get us out of here! Niran bellowed over the chaos. The Prylorian ship lurched as it attempted to pull away, but the Defiant matched its maneuvers, staying locked on its tail. Captain Williams leaned forward in his chair, eyes narrowed. Stay on them, don't let them escape, he ordered. Niran growled, realizing the humans would not relent. He turned to his navigator. Prepare to jump to hyperspace. It's our only chance. As the Prylorian ship's hyperdrive began to spool up, the humans' battle song shifted, the melody becoming faster and more aggressive. It pulsed through the ship, seeming to vibrate the very hull. Sir, the humans are firing some kind of new torpedo, Zaxor reported, his voice tinged with fear. The Defiant launched a volley of quantum resonance torpedoes, the projectiles streaking through space, homing in on the Prylorian ship's hyperdrive signature. Just as Niran's ship entered the hyperspace conduit, the torpedoes detonated. A massive shockwave ripped through the conduit destabilizing the jump. The Prylorian ship shuddered violently as it was wrenched back into real space, alarms blaring as critical systems failed. Hyperdrive offline, main power core damaged. We're losing life support, Zaxor shouted over the din. The lights on the bridge flickered and died, leaving only the dim glow of emergency lighting. Niran sagged in his chair, defeated as his ship began to drift. On the Defiant, Captain Williams watched the crippled Prylorian vessel, his expression grim. The battle song faded, replaced by a somber, mournful tune. Stand down, weapons, but maintain defensive posture, Williams commanded. He turned to his comms officer. Hail them. Offer assistance and refuge for their survivors. Niran's claws dug into his armrests as the human captain's voice filled the bridge. Zaxor placed a hand on his shoulder. Captain, we have no choice. Our ship is lost. We must accept their aid, Zaxor urged. Niran's mandibles twitched, his pride warring with the need to save his crew. Finally, he nodded. Prylorian escape pods began to launch from the stricken ship, small beacons of light in the darkness. The Defiance crew watched solemnly as they prepared to receive the survivors. In the hangar bay, Niran, Zaxor, and the remaining Prylorians stepped out of their pods, met by a wary but compassionate human reception. The battle was over, but the scars it left would linger, a testament to the power of the human's strange and haunting battle songs. The Defiance medical bay buzzed with activity as human doctors and medics tended to the Prylorian survivors. Niran lay on a bed, his head throbbing from the concussion he sustained during the battle. Captain Williams entered the room, his face etched with a mix of exhaustion and concern. He approached Niran's bedside, meeting the Prylorian leader's gaze. Why have you brought me here? Niran asked, his voice strained. What do you want from us? Williams pulled up a chair and sat down. We're not your enemies, Niran. We want to help. Niran's mandibles twitched. Help? After what just happened? Your ship nearly destroyed mine, and that, that noise, that singing. What kind of weapon was that? The human captain leaned forward. It wasn't a weapon, it was music, an integral part of our culture used for communication, motivation, and emotional expression. Music? Niran repeated the unfamiliar word. I don't understand. Williams explained. The songs we sang during the battle were ancient warrior hymns, passed down through generations of human soldiers. They help us fight with coordination and boost our morale. Niran's eyes widened. The concept of using something as intangible as music to aid in battle was completely foreign to him. Prelorians relied on advanced technology and strict military hierarchy to win their fights. The idea of using sound to inspire and unite warriors was unheard of. Your culture values this music? Niran asked, trying to wrap his mind around it. Williams nodded. Music is a fundamental part of who we are. It's not just for battle, but for every aspect of our lives. As they talked, 
Niran revealed that the Prylorians were once a peaceful race, but centuries of conflict with a hostile neighboring empire had forced them to become a warrior society. Their single-minded focus on military might had left their culture stagnant and devoid of artistic expression. Captain Williams saw an opportunity. What if we shared our music and culture with your people, in exchange for a truce between our races? Niran was hesitant. The idea of a cultural exchange was tempting, but he knew he couldn't make such a decision alone. I would need to discuss this proposal with my superiors, but I can see the potential benefits. Williams smiled. Of course, when you're ready, we can arrange for your safe return to Prylorian space. As the human captain left the medical bay, Niran lay back on the bed, his mind reeling with the possibilities. The battle may have been lost, but perhaps something new and unexpected could be gained from this encounter with the enigmatic humans and their strange, powerful music. As the Defiant towed the crippled Prylorian ship through the void, Captain Williams invited Niran and his crew to the recreation deck. Prylorians filed in, their eyes scanning the unfamiliar space. Instruments of all kinds hung on the walls, guitars, drums, violins and more. Speakers thrummed with a pulsing beat. Williams gestured to the array. Welcome to the heart of human culture, our music. Niran reached out to touch a large drum, feeling the taut skin vibrate under his claws. This is a weapon of war. In a way, Williams smiled. War drums once guided our armies into battle like your battle songs. Intrigued, the Prylorians gathered closer. Williams and his crew introduced them to genres from across Earth, the primal power of war drums, the rousing call of battle hymns, the electronic beats of synth metal. Niran was drawn to the rhythmic pounding, finding it not unlike the subsonic vibrations of Prylorian war chants. His warriors tapped their claws to the beat, some making atonal trills in their throats. In a corner, Zaxor stood apart, arms crossed. His eyes followed a human ensign who picked up a polished wooden violin. With a nod from Williams, she tucked it under her chin and drew the bow across the strings. A haunting melody bloomed in the air, sweet and sorrowful, painting visions of loss and hope. The ensign poured her skill into the wordless song. Zaxor's eyes closed, his mind far away, remembering a time before the Prylorians embraced conquest above all, a time when they too created instead of destroyed. The music seemed to resonate in his very carapace. When it ended, Zaxor found his cheeks wet with a warrior's tears, shed for a dream long dead. Williams caught his eye from across the room, sharing a look of understanding. As days passed and the Defiant drew closer to Prylorian space, Niran and his warriors continued to visit the humans, learning and sharing. Using scrap metal and wiring from their ruined ship, they began to fashion crude instruments of their own. The first hesitant warbles soon grew into a cacophonous symphony as Prylorians experimented with their new sonic weapons. The discordant sounds were strange to human ears, but held their own primal beauty. Zaxor often sat apart during these sessions, deep in thought. The strains of the violin lingered in his mind, making him question the path his people had chosen. Was endless warfare truly the only way, or had they, in their quest for dominance, lost something vital? When the blue-white world of the Prelorian homeworld finally came into view, Niran stood on the Defiance observation deck with Williams. I will bring your proposal to the High Council, Niran clicked, but do not expect an easy reception. Change does not come easily to my people. Williams nodded. I understand, but I have hope. Your people have already taken the first step by opening your minds to new possibilities. The Defiant settled into orbit, and a shuttle carried Niran and his warriors to the surface. In the Grand Chamber of the High Council, Prylorian lords in ornate armor watched from raised platforms as Niran made his case for a cultural exchange. He spoke of the power of human music and the potential for a new understanding between their races. Silence reigned when he finished, broken only by the rustle of shifting chitin. At last an ancient Prylorian, his shell pitted with scars, rose to speak. You propose we allow an enemy to infect us with their art? 
distract us from the purity of combat? Other elders muttered their agreement. But from the lower platforms where younger warriors sat, a voice rose in challenge. And what has our purity brought us? An endless cycle of war, each generation knowing nothing but the harvest of blood. Zaxo stood, daring to meet the elders' baleful glares. I say we have lost our way. Perhaps it is time we learned a new path. Murmurs of agreement mixed with hisses of dissent. The council argued long into the night, tradition clashing with the winds of change. In the end, they settled on a compromise, a trial period. The humans would be allowed to send musicians and artists to Prylorian space to share their knowledge. In exchange, a delegation of Prylorian warriors would go to Earth to study human ways of war. As the decision was formalized, Zaxor caught Niran's eye across the chamber. A look passed between them, a shared hope that this could be the start of something new. A chance, perhaps, to find a new sort of strength in the spaces between the songs of war. The first human ship touched down on the Prylorian homeworld, its gleaming hull reflecting the harsh orange glare of the alien sun. Niran watched from a distance as the vessel's ramp lowered, revealing a group of humans carrying strange cases and equipment. They were the vanguard of the cultural exchange, the musicians and artists tasked with sharing their craft with the Prylorian people. Niran approached the humans, his kite in armor clicking softly with each step. He had been chosen to oversee the exchange, a duty he accepted with a mix of curiosity and trepidation. As he drew closer, he saw that the humans were setting up what appeared to be a stage, complete with instruments and colorful banners. To her tall, lanky human with a shock of red hair noticed Niran and waved him over. Hello there. You must be Niran. I'm Marcus, the lead painter for our little troupe. Niran nodded, his mandibles twitching slightly. Welcome to our world. I trust your journey was uneventful. Marcus grinned. Smooth as silk. Your people sure know how to build a ship. As the humans finished their preparations, a crowd of Prylorians began to gather, drawn by the commotion. Many wore expressions of confusion or suspicion, unsure what to make of the strange visitors and their alien ways. The human musicians took to the stage, and soon the air was filled with a riot of sound and color. They played instruments that the Prylorians had never seen before, creating melodies that were at once foreign and strangely compelling. Some of the Prylorians began to sway to the beat, their natural rhythms finding harmony with the human music. Niran watched, fascinated, as the human artists moved among the crowd, showing off their paintings and sculptures. One in particular caught his eye, a large canvas depicting a battle scene rendered in bold, slashing strokes of color. The figures on the canvas seemed to move and surge with an almost palpable energy, their faces contorted in a mix of rage and ecstasy, do you like it? Marcus asked, appearing at Niran's side. Niran nodded slowly. It's powerful. I can feel the emotion in every brushstroke. Marcus smiled. That's the point. Art is a way to express the things we can't put into words. The joy, the pain, the fury of battle. It's all there if you know how to look. As the days passed, more and more Prylorians began to participate in the workshops and performances, some picked up brushes and chisels, tentatively at first, then with growing confidence. Others joined in the music, adding their own strange harmonies to the human songs. Niran found himself spending more and more time with Marcus, discussing the role of art in Prylorian society. He learned that the humans used their creative pursuits as a way to cope with the stresses of war, to find meaning and purpose beyond the battlefield. Meanwhile, light years away on Earth, Zaxor and the Prylorian delegation were learning similar lessons. They watched, amazed, as human soldiers took breaks from their drills to play music or sketch in notebooks. At first, Zaxor dismissed these activities as frivolous wastes of time. But as he observed more closely, he began to notice a difference in the soldiers who engaged in the arts. They seemed more focused, more resilient as if they had found an inner strength that sustained them through the rigors of war. In his communications with Niran, Zaxor shared his observations. Together they began to see the potential for a new way forward, a path that could lead their people 
out of the cycle of endless conflict. They knew it would not be easy. There were many among the Prylorians who clung to the old ways, who saw the embrace of art and music as a weakness. But Niran and Zaxa were determined. They had seen the power of the human spirit, the way it could endure and even thrive in the face of adversity, and they knew that if their people were to have any hope of a better future, they would need to find that same strength within themselves. Even as they made their plans, however, trouble was brewing. In the shadowed halls of the Prylorian War Council, a group of hardline warriors met in secret, their faces twisted with anger and disgust. They saw the cultural exchange as a betrayal of everything they had fought and died for, a surrender to the soft, weak ways of the humans. And they were determined to stop it no matter the cost. The Grand Chamber of the High Council erupted into chaos as General Tyrix and his loyal followers burst through the ornate doors, weapons drawn. The hardline warrior strode forward, his kite in armor gleaming under the harsh lights. He glared at the gathered council members, mandibles twitching with barely contained rage. This farce ends now, Tyrix snarled, his voice echoing off the vaulted ceiling. The humans have made us weak, poisoned our minds with their so-called art. We are warriors, not mewling hatchlings to be coddled with songs and paintings. Niran rose from his seat, standing tall in the face of Tyrix's fury. You're wrong, Tyrix. The cultural exchange has not weakened us, it has made us stronger. Our soldiers who have embraced the human ways show greater skill and unity than ever before. Tyrix scoffed, his mandibles flaring. Pretty words, Niran. But can your enlightened warriors stand against a true Prylorian assault? He raised his plasma rifle, pointing it at Niran's chest. I say we put an end to this nonsense and return to the old ways, the ways that made us strong. The chamber descended into a frenzy of clicking and hissing as council members argued back and forth. Some sided with Tyrix, pounding their claws against their armoured thighs in a show of support. Others rallied behind Niran, gesturing emphatically as they made their case for the exchange. Niran held his ground, even as Tyrix's finger tightened on the trigger. The old ways led us to stagnation and endless war. The humans have shown us a new path, one that could lead to a brighter future for our people. Just as it seemed violence would erupt, the doors to the chamber swung open once more. A group of human and Prylorian musicians entered, instruments in hand. At their head was Marcus, the red-haired painter who had become Niran's friend and confidant. Without a word, they began to play. A haunting melody filled the air, a mournful yet hopeful tune that seemed to weave itself into the very fabric of the room. The music spoke of shared pain and loss, of the scars that war had left on both their races, but it also hinted at the promise of a better tomorrow, a future where Prylorian and human could stand together not as enemies, but as friends. As the music swelled, Tyrix's rifle wavered. His followers, too, seemed transfixed by the melody, their anger slowly draining away. The song reached its climax, and Tyrix lowered his weapon, a single tear glistening on his battle-hardened face. Seizing the moment, Niran called for a vote. Let the Council decide the fate of the cultural exchange. Will we cling to the past, or will we embrace the future? One by one, the Council members cast their votes. To the surprise of all, the tally was overwhelmingly in favor of continuing the exchange. Even some of Tyrix's staunchest supporters had been swayed by the power of the music. As the final vote was tallied, Niran let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. The path ahead would not be easy. There were still those who doubted, still those who feared change. But for now, at least, the dream of a new Prylorian society, one enriched by the arts and strengthened by diversity, lived on. Niran and Zaxor stood before a group of human advisers, their kite in armor gleaming under the bright lights of the conference room. They had spent the last few days working tirelessly to develop a new training curriculum for the Prylorian military, one that would integrate the arts and music into their traditional combat exercises. We'll start with basic classes in music composition and performance, Niran said, his mandibles clicking as he spoke. Our soldiers will learn to play instruments and create their own battle hymns, just like the humans do. 
Zaxor nodded, his eyes gleaming with excitement. And we'll incorporate visual arts as well. Painting, sculpture, even dance. Anything that can help our warriors express themselves and find new ways to approach challenges. The human advisers murmured their approval, impressed by the Prylorian's enthusiasm and openness to new ideas. They worked together to refine the curriculum, ensuring that it would be both effective and engaging for the Prylorian soldiers. When the new training program was first introduced, many of the Prylorian warriors were skeptical. They had spent their entire lives focused solely on combat and conquest, and the idea of spending time on artistic pursuits seemed frivolous at best, and a waste of valuable resources at worst. Why should we bother with this nonsense? One soldier grumbled as he picked up a paintbrush for the first time. We're warriors, not artists. But as the soldiers began to participate in the classes, their attitudes started to change. They found that learning to play an instrument or create a piece of art required the same discipline and focus as mastering a new weapon or combat technique. And as they poured their emotions and experiences into their creations, they began to feel a sense of catharsis and connection with their fellow soldiers. I never knew I had this inside me, one warrior said, as he stood back to admire the painting he had just completed. It depicted a fierce battle scene, with Prylorian soldiers charging forward against a horde of enemy fighters. But instead of the usual grim determination on their faces, the soldiers in the painting wore expressions of joy and exultation, as if they were reveling in the thrill of the fight. As the training program continued, the Prylorian military began to see a noticeable shift in its tactics and strategies. Commanders started to incorporate music and sound into their battle plans, using them to communicate with their troops and disorient their enemies. They also employed visual arts to create more effective camouflage and deceptive displays, fooling their opponents into thinking they were facing a much larger or more powerful force than they actually were. The success of the Prylorian military's new approach quickly gained attention from other races in the galaxy. Some viewed it with suspicion and fear, worried that the Prylorians would become an even more formidable enemy with their newfound creativity and adaptability. But others saw it as a sign of hope, a chance for greater understanding and cooperation between different species. As word of the Prylorian cultural revolution spread, more and more races began to reach out to Niran and Zaxor, expressing their interest in learning about human music and art, and in sharing their own cultural traditions. The two Prylorians found themselves at the center of a growing movement, one that sought to promote peace and understanding through the power of artistic expression. When they received an invitation to speak at a galactic summit on the role of art and music in promoting peace, Niran and Zaxa knew that they had an opportunity to make a real difference. As they prepared for the summit, they couldn't help but reflect on the incredible journey that had brought them to this point. To think it all started with a simple act of singing, Niran said, shaking his head in wonder. Zaxor nodded, a smile tugging at the corners of his mandibles. Who would have thought that something so small could have such a profound impact? They knew that there was still much work to be done, and that change would not come easily. But as they looked out at the stars, they felt a sense of hope and possibility that they had never known before. With music and art as their guides, they knew that anything was possible. Niran and Zaxa stood backstage at the galactic summit, their kite in armor polished to a high shine. They had spent weeks preparing for this moment, crafting a speech that would inspire hope and unity among the gathered races. But just as they were about to step out onto the stage, a Prelorian aide rushed up to them, his face etched with worry. Commanders, we have an emergency transmission from the homeworld, the aide said, handing Niran a data pad. Tyrix and his followers have launched an attack on the capital city. They're calling themselves the true Prelorians and claiming that the cultural exchange has weakened our society. Niran scanned the report, his mandibles clicking with agitation. The rebels had managed to steal a cache of human weapons and were using them to devastating effect against the government forces. The Prylorian soldiers, many of whom had embraced the new ways of thinking and fighting, were struggling to mount an effective defense against the brutal tactics of the traditionalists. Zaxor leaned over Niran's shoulder, 
his eyes widening as he read the details of the attack. This is a disaster, he said. If we don't act quickly, Tyrix could undo everything we've worked for. Niran nodded, his mind racing. They had two options, continue with their planned speech and hope to rally support from the other races, or rush back to the homeworld to lead the fight against the rebels. Neither choice was ideal, but they had to make a decision quickly. As they huddled together, weighing their options, a human musician named Lila approached them. She had been scheduled to perform with them at the summit and had overheard their conversation. I know it's not my place, Lila said, her voice soft but determined. But I think you should stay and give your speech. Your people need to hear from you now, more than ever. They need to know that they're not alone in this fight. Niran and Zaxor looked at each other, considering Lila's words. She was right. If they abandoned the summit now, it would send a message of weakness and despair to their people. They needed to show that they were still committed to the cause of unity and progress, even in the face of adversity. We'll stay, Niran said finally, his voice firm. But we'll need to change our plan. Instead of just giving a speech, we'll use the summit to broadcast a message of resistance and hope to our people. We'll show them that they have allies across the galaxy who stand with them. Lila's face lit up with excitement. I have an idea, she said. What if we put together a massive virtual concert? We could bring in musicians and artists from all over the galaxy to perform together and broadcast it to every corner of Prilorian space. Zaxa's eyes widened with realization. A concert, of course. Music has always been a powerful force for unity and inspiration. If we can give our people something to rally around, something to believe in, it could turn the tide against Tyrix and his rebels. Over the next few hours, Niran and Zaxor worked frantically with Lila and the other musicians to put together a lineup for the concert. They reached out to artists from dozens of different species, explaining the situation on Prilorian and asking for their help. To their amazement, the response was overwhelming. Musicians and performers from across the galaxy volunteered to take part, eager to show their support for the Prilorian people. As the time for the concert approached, Niran and Zaxor took their places on the stage, their hearts pounding with anticipation. They were joined by a diverse array of musicians, each one bringing their own unique style and energy to the performance. There were human rock stars with electric guitars, Allurian throat singers with their haunting melodies, and even a Zorgian percussion ensemble that used their own bodies as instruments. But the true star of the show was the music itself. As the first notes rang out across the galaxy, Niran and Zaxor could feel the power and emotion of the performance washing over them. The song spoke of resilience in the face of adversity, of the unbreakable bonds of friendship and unity that could overcome any obstacle. And as they watched the reactions of the Prylorian people, they knew that their message was getting through. In the capital city, rebels and loyalists alike paused in their fighting to listen to the music. Some of the rebels began to lower their weapons, looks of doubt and confusion crossing their faces. They had been so sure of their cause, so certain that the cultural exchange was a threat to their way of life. But now hearing the voices of their fellow Prylorians joined in harmony with those of other species, they began to question everything they had believed. In the streets and homes of Prylorian, civilians huddled around viewscreens and communication devices, tears streaming down their faces as they listened to the concert. For so long, they had lived in fear and uncertainty, never knowing if the next day would bring more violence and bloodshed. But now, for the first time in generations, they felt a sense of hope and possibility. They saw that there was another way forward, a path that led not to conquest and domination, but to cooperation and understanding. As the final notes of the concert faded away, Niran and Zaxor stood hand in hand with their fellow musicians, their faces shining with emotion. They knew that the road ahead would not be easy, that there would be many challenges and obstacles to overcome, but they also knew that they had taken an important first step, that they had shown their people that a better future was possible, and with the power of music and art to guide them, they were ready to face whatever lay ahead. The music swelled to a triumphant crescendo, the voices of the musicians rising in harmony to proclaim a message of hope and unity. 
In that moment, Tyrix knew his rebellion was doomed. He saw the faces of his own soldiers, once hardened by battle and loyal to his cause, now awash with doubt and uncertainty. Desperation clawed at Tyrix's mind. He couldn't let it end like this, not when he had sacrificed so much to preserve the Prylorian way of life. With a snarl of rage, he turned to his most fanatical followers. Ertak the concert hall, we must silence this heresy once and for all. The rebels surged forward, brandishing their weapons as they charged towards the venue. The Prylorian security forces, caught off guard by the sudden assault, scrambled to mount a defence, but it was too late. Chaos erupted as the rebels stormed the hall. Laser fire scorched the walls and shattered instruments. Musicians and audience members alike screamed in terror, some running for cover while others grabbed whatever they could to fight back. A human drummer wielded his snare like a shield, deflecting blaster bolts before smashing it over a rebel's head. An Allurian singer used her powerful vocal cords to unleash a sonic blast that sent a group of attackers flying. In the midst of the melee, Niran fought his way towards the stage, desperate to reach Zaxa and the other musicians. He saw a group of young Prylorians cowering behind an overturned amplifier, their eyes wide with fear. Zaxor stood in front of them, his body a living shield as he fired his own weapon at the advancing rebels. A sudden explosion rocked the stage, sending Zaxa tumbling to the ground. Niran rushed to his friend's side, cradling him in his arms. Blue blood seeped from a gaping wound in Zaxor's chest, his breathing shallow and laboured. Niran! Zaxor rasped, his voice barely audible over the sounds of battle. You must keep fighting, don't let our dream die. Liran felt hot tears sting his eyes. I can't do this without you, old friend. Zaxor gripped Niran's hand with the last of his strength. Yes, you can, you must for all of us. With a final rattling breath, Zaxor's body went limp. Niran let out a howl of anguish, his grief and rage boiling over. He gently laid Zaxor down and stood, his eyes blazing with determination. Musicians of the galaxy, to me, he roared, let us show these rebels the true power of our art. The surviving musicians rallied around Niran, their instruments now weapons of war. They turned their amplifiers to full blast and directed the sonic onslaught towards the rebel forces. The wall of sound was unlike anything the Prylorians had ever experienced, a physical force that pummeled their bodies and scrambled their senses. The rebels clutched at their ears, some dropping to their knees in agony. The loyalist forces pressed their advantage, driving the disoriented enemy back with a hail of blaster fire. Niran pushed through the chaos, his eyes locked on Tyrix. The rebel leader had armed himself with a human sonic cannon, its low thrum building to a devastating crescendo. Tyrix aimed the weapon at Niran, a sneer of hatred twisting his face. You've ruined everything, Tyrix screamed over the cannon's rising whine. I'll see you dead for this traitor. Niran leaped forward as Tyrix fired, the sonic blast tearing through the air where he had stood a heartbeat before. The two Prylorians clashed in a duel of sound and fury, their weapons locked in a deadly embrace. They grappled across the ruined stage, neither giving ground. Niran could feel the sonic cannon's vibrations rattling his bones, threatening to tear him apart from within. With a burst of desperate strength, he wrenched the weapon from Tyrix's grasp and turned it against him. The rebel leader had only a moment to register the look of grim determination on Niran's face, before the cannon discharged point-blank into his chest. Tyrix's scream was lost in the deafening boom, his body blasted backwards to crumple in a smoking heap. Niran let the cannon fall from his hands, his breath coming in ragged gasps. He surveyed the devastation around him, the once grand concert hall now a smouldering ruin. The bodies of rebels and loyalists alike littered the ground, intermingled with the shattered remains of instruments. But even amidst the carnage, Niran could hear the faint strains of music rising from the survivors. Battered and bloodied, the musicians played on, their notes a defiant hymn against the darkness. In that moment, Niran knew that Zaxor's sacrifice had not been in vain. The Prylorian government wasted no time in beginning the process of rebuilding in the aftermath of Tyrix's 
failed rebellion. Niran, hailed as a hero by his people, threw himself into the effort with a passion born of grief and determination. He used his newfound influence to push for even greater cultural exchange between the Prylorians and other species, knowing that understanding was the key to lasting peace. In honor of Zaxor's memory, Niran established a foundation dedicated to promoting the arts as a means of fostering unity and common ground. As he stood before a cheering crowd at the Foundation's inaugural event, Niran couldn't help but reflect on the incredible journey that had brought him to this moment. It had all begun with a simple act of singing in the heat of battle, a spark that had ignited a revolution. Niran knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult. There would always be those who clung to the old ways, who saw violence and conquest as the only path to greatness. But as he looked out at the sea of faces before him, Prylorian and human, Alurian and Zorgian, all united in their love of music and art, he knew that there was still hope. As long as there were those willing to stand up and sing in the face of darkness, to create beauty in the midst of destruction, then the dream of a better tomorrow would never die. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.